Hello everybody, today we're doing a video for GTA Car Kits in a 2016 Porsche 911 and today we're installing our version 2 of our Apple CarPlay and Android Auto Kit. As you can see it's paired to our iPhone wirelessly, now it supports Android Auto wirelessly also. The kit is much smaller now and doesn't require a secondary module, you just have to install a PCB inside the stereo and that's pretty much the whole kit. There's way less wiring and no microphone required anymore, the car uses the system uses the original microphone from the car. You can control Apple CarPlay and Android Auto with original controls. You can control it with touchscreen. If you press the, and hold the info button, you can switch to the original system. Nothing gets disabled, but you get an extra function which you didn't have before. Our kit also supports map adjustment for night driving. As you can see, it dims, so it does it for Waze or Google Maps. And now we're going to show you how to install it in this particular car. So the tools that you're going to need is a T25 Torx and we're using it on a uh, like screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, a T8 Torx and panel removal tool and a hook tool which is also part of the panel removal toolkit and we're going to be using a microfiber cloth to cover the plastics here. So first we're going to use our panel removal tool and we're going to get underneath here and just work our way up. So we're gonna remove these two side panels. Now we're gonna remove the four T25 Torx. So there's two on this side and two on the other side. Now to remove the radio, we're gonna have to move this uh, shift lever down. So we're gonna make sure that the car e-brake is on. Then we will not press the foot brake, we'll turn on the ignition. Then we'll press on the foot brake and then we'll shut off the ignition. Now in order not to scratch anything, we'll cover these bottom plastics. And at this point, you can carefully take the radio out, make sure that the metal body of the radio doesn't touch the dashboard and we're gonna kind of bring it out to the passenger side here. So first thing we're gonna remove is the quad lock connection. So we're gonna press on the clip here and it will release. Then we're gonna remo remove the antennas and for that you can use a flathead screwdriver. So you can press on each clip here. There's clips on top. You press on it and then you can carefully Underneath, wiggle the antennas out. Make sure that you hear the, the clip release. If you have XM, you're gonna have one more antenna to disconnect, but this car doesn't have XM. Same on the other side. This clip here is on the side. So you're gonna carefully wiggle it out. Now we're going to use our fingers and here we go. So now we're going to show you what we're going to do to the inside of the stereo. So here we have our kit and this is the radio that we removed. The two tools that we're going to need is a T8 Torx and the hook tool to install this inside the radio. So we'll show you what comes inside the kit. So you have your basic wiring diagram. Then we have our two antennas and then we have our spacers. So there's two sets of spacers. There's the short ones and the long ones. We'll explain to you what, what's the difference. Then we have the cables to connect the original screen to our module. There's two of them. Then we have our main motherboard, which is essentially the whole kit, which we're gonna install inside our stereo here. We have the main quad lock harness, which we're gonna install inside the car. We also have this uh, USB cable, which we're gonna also inside, install inside the car which also gives you the ability to install an aftermarket rear view camera or front view camera if your car is not equipped with it. And then the final two is the two cables that we will install inside our stereo here. Here we have our stereo and again we're using the same microfiber cloth from the inside not to scratch anything. We're gonna use the T8 Torx and start from the top. There's two T8 Torx bolts on top. We flip the radio and there's two more T8 Torx. You're gonna notice that these two T8s 
torque bolts, they're the shorter ones. And then all the other ones we're going to remove, they're going to be way longer. So the two short ones go at the bottom of the stereo. Now at the back of the stereo, there's three more bolts that we have to remove. There's one, two, and three. Now with the radio flipped on its back, we're going to disconnect this, this uh, face plate from the actual body of the stereo. And there's two clips that hold it in on each side. So there's these two. So we're going to kind of push on the face plate and at the same time release, this, release these two clips. So there's one side. This is the second. With the clips released, you're just going to separate the faceplate from the body of the stereo and you're going to see two video cables, two flat cables between them two. So we're going to use our hook tool and carefully release each clip. So you're going to go on each corner. Now you can put the faceplate away. Now we will push the bottom portion of the stereo from the front of the stereo towards the back and we'll slide off the locks and you will be able to kind of put it on the side. You, don't, you do not have to disconnect this particular cable. You can work around it. Next, we're going to be mounting our motherboard inside the stereo. So we'll go in like this. So in order to mount, mount it, we're going to have to install three spacers. So what, we're going to install one here. We might as well remove the bolt right now. So there's one bolt. Then the second spacer will go here. And then the third spacer is right here. So this radio is not equipped with XM radio. If it was, then you would have an additional motherboard here. Uh, because of that, we're going to be using the three short spacers. You get six total, three short, three long. If you would have XM, you would use all six spacers, so you would combine it into one single long one, so you would have three long spacers in order for our motherboard to be above the XM. But in this stereo, we don't need to do that, so we're just going to be using three short spacers, and we're just going to mount them instead of the bolts that we took out. So the motherboard will go in like this. So the two original cables will plug in into these two slots and then two cables that came with our kit will plug in here. So first we're going to do that. We're going to take them. Make sure that it's all the way in and fully straight before you lock it in place. So now we need to feed these two wires inside the stereo. So we're going to be using this opening right here. So if your car doesn't have XM, you would just undo one bolt here and remove the metal block over here. If your car has XM, you would do the same thing. You would just move the antenna to the side and it will be fine like that to just connect the antenna back without it being connected by the screw. So we're going to kind of twist these two cables and put them through. So here's one. Take your time not to damage anything. Now we're going to take the two antennas and do the same thing. Here you go. Now we took our motherboard and we're just going to plug in the two cables. It's just easier to do it while it's in your arms versus when it's already bolted in inside the stereo. Now we're going to take the two antennas. So one goes here. It has to clip in. Same with the second antenna. You're going to maneuver these cables and you will put the module in. Here you go, see it lines up with the holes and it lines up here with this piece sticking out. And at this point you can put the three bolts back. You do not need to over tighten these bolts, you just slightly screw them in. 
these two cables you can just feed out because that's where we're going to connect our original faceplate to. And these two original cables we're going to connect now to our motherboard. So first we'll do the big one. Again, it has to go all the way in and it'd be straight. And then you lock it in place. If it's slightly on the angle, then you will not get any image when you turn, try to turn the stereo on. So at this point, we're done with installing everything inside the stereo and now we can put it back together. So we're gonna take this portion, make sure it lines up and then you will lock it in place. So now we have our original faceplate. So we're gonna make sure that the locks are unlocked. You will insert the supplied cables. Same thing, they have to be straight all the way in and you lock them in. Now you're gonna move the cables around a little bit. I'm gonna grab the stereo because there's two hooks right here. There's one here, one here, and then there's a middle guide. So that's how we have to line up the stereo. So we lined it up, it's on two hooks, and then you can lock it in place. So these clips on each side have to go in. Here you go. And now at this point you can start putting the bolts back, but we're suggesting not to do that and test the radio first in your car to make sure that the faceplate lights up, has to operate as original before you screw everything back. So once everything is installed as stereo, you're just gonna have two extra wires coming out here and then two antennas. So the two antennas, you can just wrap around the top and we're just gonna use a piece of tape, clear tape to cover them. We are gonna put the, all the bolts back into the stereo. So now we're going to take the radio and these remaining cables and go back to the car and install everything. So now we're back in the car and there's two things to install. This is the quad lock harness that comes with our kit. So you will take the female part and connect the original harness here. Make sure that it goes all the way, almost like 80% and then you lock it in place. Otherwise you can lock it in place and if it's not fully in, it will not send power to the stereo. The second cable is the USB female, which is used to connect and initiate your uh, pairing to the phones. Also, it's used to do updates and to connect uh, to the kit by the wire. So there's two places you can run it to. There's one place you can run it behind here and have it come out by the right knee of the driver. Another place is where we're gonna run it to. We're gonna open up the glove box. We're gonna, with the open glove box, we're gonna feed the wire through and pull. That way you have the wire come out into the glove box, which gets hidden, which is a good option. So now this is our stereo with the two extra wires. So we're gonna take the first wire, which comes from our uh, harness here, and we're gonna plug it in to the wire which we ran inside the stereo. And this is the wire for the USB, or if you're planning to add uh, aftermarket review cameras, so you plug it in here. 
And of course, we're going to take our quad lock and with the open position, push it in and then you're going to lock it in place. That way, it's, when it's flush with the body of the stereo, it means it's plugged in correctly. At this point, it's good to test the stereo. So you got to make sure that it turns on and that the touchscreen is working. So we're just going to wait till it loads. And then, as you can see, if you press, it works. So that's it. The stereo is good. You can now turn it off. And that's what we mentioned before. So if you can connect it by this harness, connect these two wires, and then you can test it without bolting everything back in order to test that it works. So you don't do double the job. At this point, we're going to start putting everything back in and we're going to start by plugging in the antennas. So there's two antennas on the right side. First, we'll do the black one. And there's two more here. Here you go. And at this point, you just got to make sure that the quad lock goes to the bottom there. That way everything fits back in. You don't need to connect any of the other connections. You just got to make sure that when you're putting it in, there's no wires sticking at the bottom of the stereo or the top. You're going to start carefully putting it in. So now you can put the car into park and just make sure that the stereo still works. It does. And now we're going to put the four bolts back, so two on each side. So now we're going to put back the two side panels. So first we're going to insert it over here and only then you're going to start clipping it to the sides. Same with this one, you push it forward and only then start locking it back in. So as you can see everything is installed and the only extra thing here we have is our USB female which we're gonna plug in our uh, lightning cable or you can plug in your USB type C if you're using Android and now we're gonna plug in our phone and gonna start the stereo. So once you plug in the phone, it will prompt you to agree to a bunch of things and to enable wireless. So once you enable wireless, then you can uh, stop using the cable. So you can choose the source of sound as auxiliary. And if you go to any of your music, make sure to test for sound. So the sound is working. So now we disconnected our cable. As you can see, it's paired to our CarPlay wirelessly, so you can put the cable away. So that will be the same if you start using your Android phone. And again, this was a video for GTA Car Kits in a 2016 Porsche 911. We hope you like this video and we'll see you next time.